Uh, what are you going to do? Um, all right. Uh, once again, ladies and gentlemen, we've, we've already heard a little bit about the research of uh, our next presenter. So I'll go ahead and tell you something personal about her. Uh, Kate and I share a dental hygienist. And we're, when we're not talking about linguistics, we're talking about how much we love our dental hygienist. From UGA, Kate Bovey. And I do love my dental hygienist. Um, so today I'm going to talk a little bit about pragmatic investigation of uh, reduplication of adjectives. I'm going to look at Spanish, English, and Maya. So uh, my title is, was she sick, sick, enfermo, enfermo, cojan, cojan? So I'm going to talk a little bit about what reduplication is, show you some examples from cross-linguistic cross data with reduplication, look a little bit into the previous literature, talk about my study and go into the conclusions. So what is reduplication? It's a linguistic process found in several languages worldwide and it can be done with nouns, verbs, and adjectives. There's two types. We've got partial reduplication and total reduplication. And what this is is a, a repetition of either a sound, a morpheme, like in the partial reduplication or a total reduplication of an entire word. So I've got several examples from different languages. In a uh, Mandarino, <laughs> Spanish. In Mandarin, we have um, plurality if we reduplicate the noun, so person, person would turn into people. In Quechua, we have smoke, smoke, meaning a plurality of events. She's smoking constantly. Uh, a weakening effect, Quechua, chidi chidi, meaning it's not very cold. Um, and I found this in the literature, and then I've recently had other people, Quechua speakers, say, I'm not so sure about that one, but it is in the literature as such. It can be an augmentation, so we have town, town, meaning community in Aymara. It can be an intensification, good, good, meaning really good. Uh, wet, wet, being an in, a decrease of intensity, meaning somewhat wet. We have a decrease in size, a small creek in Agta. Distribution, four by four. And authenticity, uh, like a Coke Coke, is a real Coke. <laughs> So previous literature, um, augmentation and intensification are the most common forms of uh, reduplication that we see. And in Spanish, um, Spanish doesn't use reduplication according to the literature. It was really great because it says Spanish does not do reduplication. Oh, except for in Mexican Spanish, they do it with some adverbs like luego, luego, meaning immediately, or casi, casi, which is um, an intensified form of almost, but they kind of threw that in last minute. Like, well, there's one category in Mexican Spanish, but, you know, really Spanish doesn't do it. And in English, it's a lot more common than Spanish. So it's used frequently to express authenticity. So is this a carrot cheesecake or a carrot carrot cake, right? Partial reduplication exists um, frequently, things like tick-tock, dilly-dally, where you just have a change in sound. And we have reduplication with schmu like paper schmaper uh, in Jewish English. So just to see um, those of you who are native speakers of English, if um, I'm on the road and I'm here, right, and I told you to turn left, where would you turn? This is five points. Okay. Where would you turn? A, B, C, D? B, A. A or B? If I said left, left, where would you turn? A. 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 Would you ever turn B? No. No. Okay. Just an example of the reduplication in English. Thank you. So this study, I'm also looking at Yucatec Maya. So we're looking at the Yucatan Peninsula. Um, and this, the speakers are right smack dab in the middle of the uh, Yucatan Peninsula in a town called Valladolid. And so I'm going to look at, um, is there a new significance given to the adjective when ad an adjective is reduplicated in all three languages? And if so, uh, what's that change in meaning? Does negation of a reduplicated adjective change the original meaning of the reduplicated adjective and how so? And are there patterns across all three languages? Again, so we're seeing it's there in English, we're told it's not there in Spanish, and we I have no idea in Maya, we're about to find out. <laughs> so I looked at some groups of adjectives and I have 10 classifications of adjectives. Dimension, physical property, velocity, age, color, value, difficulty, qualification, human propensity, and similarity. And so, yeah, we have some examples here. So to do this study, I looked for examples of reduplication of adjectives in each of these categories. 
I looked up the sentences in English because we know that we have a system of reduplication in English. Um, I was not, however, able to find any examples of reduplication of qualification or human propensity in English, so I had to make one up. Uh, the sentences were then translated into Spanish and to Maya, and then I negated the sentences as well. So, for example, I found the sentence, she was an old, old woman now. And so I translated that into Spanish, I translated that into Maya, and then I also translated the negated form. She was not an old, old woman. So here's some examples of the sentences I used. Managing all that is a big, big part of my job. About half the other agents called in sick, sick, sick. Um, all I could hear was her heart beating fast, fast. She was an old, old woman now. She, he has green, green eyes. Uh, you had a bad, bad dream. Easy, easy excuse. The usual, usual method for the mafia. A sad, sad whisper. And different, different foods. And some of you who are native English speakers might be going, oh, well, that's a little weird, right? That's good. All right, so this, these were my results. So the, you can see here that in English, there were some categories that were pretty unanimously accepted for reduplication. So our big, big, sick, sick, old, old, green, green, bad, bad, sad, sad, everybody was fine with those, right? Um, and most of the time, people agreed. So fast, fast, people said no. Uh, easy, easy, no. And then we had some disagreement here. There were a total of four speakers for each category. Uh, easy, easy, half the people took it, accepted it, half the people on different, different, right? When we get over to Spanish, you see that a lot more people are not accepting these sentences. However, in a language that doesn't have reduplication, it's accepted pretty frequently, right? I decided to divide out, I had two Peninsular Spanish speakers, and then the other two, one was Mexican and one was Colombian. And so I decided to make the um, Peninsular Spanish speakers red so you could see, because I think there's a trend there, right? So we've got all of the red. There's only one category where both Peninsular Spanish speakers said, okay, yeah, that's fine. However, there's a lot of categories where the non-Peninsular Spanish speakers agree. And in Yucatec Maya, they loved all of them. They loved them all. They were like, yeah, that makes sense, of course. You can do that. And we have one that is ungrammatical, and I'll get into that in just a second. So is there a new significance when it's reduplicated? There is, right? And reduplication augments and intensifies in all of the examples across all three languages. For example, you just had a bad, bad dream. One of my speakers told me, after you wake up, you still feel bad. It was that bad. And another phenomenon existed only in English. This only occurred with my English speakers, uh, English speaking consultants. Um, sick, sick would be so sick they couldn't even stand. Or it also could have the meaning of not faking it. So she called in sick, sick like really actually sick. Um, in all language, there's a new meaning when it is reduplicated. And often this meaning was, so we have bad and then intensified bad, bad, or the new, um, the authenticity in English. And Yucatec Maya, this was interesting because uh, se'eb by itself means movement. It's kind of like a forward movement. And if you reduplicate se'eb, 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 you have fast. So it's already grammaticalized. We have this lexicon that means fast, right? Already reduplicated. So you can't increase your fastness by saying se'eb, 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 se'eb. That would just oh. not work. All right, so getting into the negation of all of these sentences. So for example, managing all that is not a big, big part of my job. Uh, not sick, sick. Uh, she wasn't an old, old woman. So for this one, we had a little bit more unaccepted. Um, my consultants didn't accept it as frequently. Um, my English six, uh, speakers did accept not big, big, not sick, sick, not old, old. And then there was disagreement throughout. Spanish, again, we have our Peninsular speakers rejecting at least one Peninsular speaker, rejecting every single one. Um, and then Yucatec Maya, they were like, yeah, great, let's do this. There were two that were not grammatical, and we'll get into those in just a little bit. So we're seeing here that it's not as accepted in the negated form. So when it is negated, the adjective meaning changes. The, po the positive form means negated or intensified, and uh, the negative form means the opposite. So if I say something like, this is a big part of my job. Uh, reduplicating that adjective, it's a big, big part of my job, it's bigger. If it's not a big, big part of my job, the speakers were telling me it was smaller than a big, big, but bigger than a big. Right? Oh, that's, yeah. 
about also we have the authenticity um, in the English speakers with the sick sick about half the other agents called in sick not sick sick so they were faking it mm. or my sister said a hangover <laughs> yeah um, in Yucatec Maya again we had two cases where it was ungrammatical so we have uh, sad actually translates as um, not happy so you can't say she wasn't not sad right she, you would you can't negate this twice right so that was ungrammatical so are there patterns across all three languages um, there are a few large differences between the language English no one accepted reduplication of velocity fast fast or difficulty difficult difficult um, every consultant accepted examples of reduplication of size physical property and age Although there were discre discrepancies on others, half the consultants always agreed. And this could mean that the reduplication system in English is becoming better defined. Um, interestingly, no one rejected the example that I had to create. She said it in a sad, sad whisper. My consultant said it was almost pathetic, right? In Maya, reduplication plays an important role in many indigenous languages, and it appears that in Maya it's the same. Uh, while there are a few sentences that were problematic, Reduplication was very accepted across the board. In the sentence, it's not the usual, usual method for the mafia, which when I saw that sentence, again, that was one of the ones that I had to alter a little bit. Um, I thought, there's no way that's going to work in any of the languages. But it's actually a very common phrase in Maya. That's what two of my consultants said. We say that all the time. And there, there's the example. So uh, Spanish is a little bit more difficult to explain, and I think it's because of my... Um, varying geographic location of the speakers. Uh, when dialects were separated into two groups, peninsular and non-peninsular, more of a pattern emerged. Of the 20 examples, peninsular speakers rejected 10 of them. And at least one uh, peninsular speaker rejected every example, <coughs> except for value, bad, bad. Uh, non-peninsular speakers accepted many more. At least one speaker accepted 11 of the 20 examples. And according to the literature, only Mexican adverbs are reduplicated, but this shows a pretty different pattern. The only category that was unanimously accepted across all three languages was bad, bad. You just had a bad, bad dream. All three languages thought that was just fine. Um, yes, this suggests patterns within languages, but not across <coughs> languages. All three languages have reduplication um, if, of adjectives. The augmented and increased size is a meaning that exists in all three, but not for all types of adjectives. Negating a sentence creates a new meaning of a, redu a reduplicated adjective. And there are some differences between the languages. The meaning of true or authentic only exists in English. And uh, there is variation in acceptability between native speakers. And Yucatec Maya uses negation and reduplication that have lexicalized in the language. And it appears that Spanish is the most restrictive of all of the languages. And I wonder if there's a fair amount of variability between dialects. So. Continuing on with this study, I'd like to look at adjectives like death. Uh, can you be dead or dead dead? Uh, to me, my intuition says that you can be dead dead, like woof, never coming back. Um, but I'm not sure. I'd like to hear what other people think. I, it would be interesting to look at a pitch component. If you removed pitch from English, I know it's a big part of it, but if you removed it, could you still understand? When you read those sentences without me reading them with you, did you get that it was augmented? I'd like to look into that. Um, in Spanish, it's really common to stick the pero, the but, in the middle of that. So you say we don't have reduplication, but if I can say grande, pero grande, and just stick that but in there, then they're fine. They'll absolutely accept that example. So looking at the differences there would be interested, interesting. And then I would like to just focus on one area, Spanish. Instead of looking at peninsular versus non-peninsular, maybe just focus on uh, Mexican monolingual Spanish speakers or just peninsular Spanish speakers. Hey, that's fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I guess wouldn't you argue that that virtually any language can have sort of spontaneous reduplication? I mean, isn't, isn't that what you would really come around to? That's what I would think. Yeah. And I think that what you said about pitch, I think intonation is very, very key in that. Mm -hmm. And it'd be interesting to get your your attitude about that. But I do think it's fairly common to reduplicate in Spanish, but. It, I'd like to see your test sentences too, honestly. Malo, malo doesn't sound so good to me, but for example, muy, muy interesante, or, tenía ojos verdes, verdes, ¿verdad? 
sounds perfectly good to me anyway, yeah. quasi-native intuitions here. And then, and then you get interesting things like, um, and, then, and before I get ahead of myself, yeah. I think Spanish has so many resources morphologically that maybe you've got the ECMO and you've got all kinds of other things that you can do instead of. But even with ECMO, for example, you've got patilisimo, patilisimo, uh -huh. which is also sort of partial reduplication. partial reduplication as well. So to say that Spanish doesn't have it, um, I don't think it's, it's quite right, but I think that's what you came around to. Yeah. What was your test sentence with, with model, model, or whatever? Uh, bad dream? Oh, I don't have it in Spanish up here. Oh, okay. um, I don't remember the exact. And, and, and you made these sentences. Un sueño malo, malo. I had um, a native speaker translator for it. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I had to say, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. What a cool study. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Kim. Well, um, a couple of thoughts. Um, I thought the first thing that uh, in your presentation that, that caught my attention was the easy, easy. And I think what we say is partial reduplication, easy peasy. Mm -hmm. So you know, just factor that in for you know whatever use it is. And then um, to the one of the last things you mentioned, uh, coming from the death industry, my uh, dad was a mortician. We had a saying, graveyard dead. And then also there's another one that's warm and dead. Like if someone froze, you know, they can potentially come back. So I think we do have a history in English of qualifying death, which you would think would be, you know, a pretty clear state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think you might find some. Interesting, yeah. Well, the, one of the neat things was, um, you know, in this language that doesn't have reduplication Spanish, I did this uh, presentation for Colloquium a few weeks ago for Romance Languages, and I had um, a young man come, and he is a literature student, Spanish literature student, and he had taken pictures of his phone of the book that he was currently reading for a class, and he was sitting there flipping through all the examples he had found in his readings for that one week. He's like, look, it's all over the place. You see this? Bueno, bueno was, I think he had four examples of that. It was pretty great. It's it's there. Definitely. And I, one thing I forgot to say about yeah. the graveyard that thing is somebody who's been dead for a while, like they, they haven't just died. Uh -huh. you know, so it's like a durative, you know, <laughs> idea. But that sounds real like a really fun study. Interesting. Like, yeah. You know, with the, the death thing, I wish that Doug was here because that's kind of something that he was interested in as far as like idiom. Mm -hmm. So like kick the bucket, you can't really say John is kicking the bucket, like it sounds mm -hmm. weird. But you can um, do that with other idioms, like John is rolling the dice or something. Um, so that just might be something to talk to, do you know, Deb Yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> it just might be something that he was interested in. Um, so it might be worth talking to him about. Cool. Thank you. Rachel. That was really interesting. <laughs> um, and also, we do this reduplication without even thinking of it in English, right? Or recognizing it for what it is. Um, do you know, typologically, across other languages, um, if there's a certain kind of adjective or if there are certain kinds of words that tend to get duplicated to one another? You know, in to, to heal, mm -hmm. adverbs of time, you can't I don't know if across ling cross linguistically there is one. Um, I'm, not, I'm not really sure about that, actually. Yeah. Bethany, do you have an idea about that? Oh. <laughs> also, also, I know that you, I mean, I, I'm picking up on the fact that you were focusing on adjectives in Japan. I just thought it would be cool to also look at the noun, even though I think you mentioned that right? they also do the noun. Yes. But, um, I thought it would be cool to look at this one, just including noun as well. Oh, absolutely. And I just heard somebody the other day, once you think about this presentation, it haunts your thoughts, all of them. Um, and I was talking to somebody and she said, well, she fell in love. Not fell in love, fell in love. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh my gosh, she just reduplicated an entire verb phrase. That's so cool. Yeah, it'd be cool just to kind of see, you know, why you would describe it. Not just that, just because I think people would usually Yeah, I was just looking at okay. those ten groups. I had to. I don't speak any Spanish. Yeah. But you said something at the end. Uh, in the future, you wanted or something like grande, piano grande. Uh huh. Is, does that ever occur in attributive position? Something I'm not like sure. Grande, piano grande. It sounds to me like intuitive thing. Of, that's something that would be pretty good, not an attributive position. I'm not sure. I don't. I mean, I was yeah, yeah. No, that that's. You look at the positions. Yeah, I have. I hadn't thought. I'm not sure if. 
I'm sorry. Yeah, that's it. That would be an interesting. I think I'm going to have to eavesdrop on this conversation later on. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, it turns out I have studied this phenomenon in Sanskrit. And it turns out that it occurs across all parts of speech. So adjectives are one of the one of the things. And uh, the sense it's more frequent than nouns actually. Mm -hmm. Sanskrit, but the sense is universality. Or with adverbs where it indicates a repetition. Uh, and in English, too, of course, we have, uh, I think, if I heard right, the question was raised about nouns. Uh, we have this, of course, with nouns in English, too. Uh, I can remember some years ago I was on a promotion committee at this university, and uh, an issue came up about people writing books, and uh, the, the burning issue in that meeting was. Is it a book book? <laughs> <laughs> is it a book book? Okay. And we have other means of, so that's a question of authenticity. Absolutely. And we have other means of doing this in English too with nouns. For example, you can use the genitive. So he's a lawyer's lawyer, in which you're really saying that he's the kind of lawyer that a real lawyer would look up to. So there are, there are, a, number of, there are a number of types of processes and, uh, language which do the same thing. Also, a very exceedingly minor point is this, that I would not call this process reduplication. I would call it iteration. Okay. Uh, I, re I, uh, I uh, restrict reduplication to morphological processes because we also we have to distinguish between the two. We know that, as you said, there's partial uh, repetition. This is found in, uh, for example, uh, many types of verb formations from language to language, just essentially repeat part of the morphological structure. But then we also have a kind of fuller form of reduplication, which is still reduplication, but it's a single word. Mm -hmm. okay. And then you have this uh, type of uh, repetition, which is not really <coughs> morphological so much. Uh, and I, I would prefer to call that iteration. Sorry. Um, I, I like that you broke up the adjectives into different types of categories. I was thinking maybe you could have another factor like a basic level versus a super level categories. And I was just thinking about those things. Um, like red, red sounds good. Um, orange, orange sounds okay to me. Um, so it's not me. I'm never so old. But like, That's a really good point. Yeah. And that's used to qualitative stuff, like a real true red, but you don't really true and that's getting more nebulous. Yeah. Frequency. Mm -hmm. Frequency, yeah. Mm -hmm. High frequency. Um, I thought of another category, expletives. Oh, when I was an undergrad. <laughs> well, and, which is always fun. Yeah. Why don't you um, do that later, Pam? <laughs> well, uh, my, my point is, uh, when I was an undergrad, I was a big sister to um, a, an elementary school child. And when she was annoyed about something, she'd say, dogs. But she was really annoyed. She'd say, dog dogs. And so pluralizing the second form, so it wasn't quite yeah. the, iter the iterative you know, doubling. But that might be fun Interesting. to um, yeah. check into. Well, Kate, uh, this has been pretty fun. Um, we should probably go ahead and uh, pull, out, pull out here uh, to give some time for our next presenter to come down and set up. But one more time for Kate.